Meantime, James Lowen is here, the author of Lies My Teacher Told Me, What Your History Books Got Wrong About Thanksgiving. Welcome to the program, sir. Hey, I enjoyed your uh, rich little stuff, too. <laughs> yeah, he's fun. We're lucky we get to talk to uh, celebrities from time to time. Yeah, and, like uh, me. There we go. <laughs> that's right. And you're going to debunk uh, some of our most beloved uh, holiday Thanksgiving thoughts? Well, I hope to, yes. Um, now, I have to say, I really like Thanksgiving. I like the food. There's nothing wrong with the idea of getting together with friends and family, you know. Um, I think the the problem is that it's a glorification of the American past, and it kind of trivializes what really happened in that past. Did we not sit down with the Indians and have a nice dinner? You know, we actually did, in a way, depending on who we are. Um, yeah, I mean, that's good. the first problem, is that we, we think of it as our founding, and it was in 1620. Well, you know, I, I first realized the problem here when I asked, started asking a whole bunch of, of college students, mostly, all across the country when I, when I went on speaking tours, um, this question. And the way I phrased it was just like this. I said, when was the country we now know as the United States first settled? And I thought by saying that we now know as, uh, that I would be getting estimates like 13,000 years ago, 25,000 yeah. years ago, 50,000 years ago. Those are the three main archaeological hypotheses. But to my surprise, the number one response given by more students than any other single response was 1620, which is, of course, the pilgrims. And that leads to the question, well, what do you have to be to be a settler? Obviously, Indians didn't settle. Uh, they must have roamed or something, even though 80% of them were farmers. Then we got the Spanish. You know, They were in what is now the United States, both in New Mexico and Florida, well before 1600. Uh, they don't count. Then we got the Dutch up in Albany. We got the French in Montreal. Well, Montreal isn't quite the United States, I have to admit. Um, finally, we have the, the English themselves in Virginia in 1607, you know. But we like the 1621 better. And I, I think there's some reasons why. Why is uh, that? Well, first of all, those English in Virginia were not very good at settling. Uh, they knew that the Spanish had found all kinds of gold in the Western Hemisphere. Um, and what the Spanish had done, of course, was force the Indians to mine it for them because the Indians knew where it was. But the English in, in Virginia just aimlessly dug holes in the ground looking for it. And, of course, there is no gold in Tidewater, Virginia, you know. Uh, I kind of live in Tidewater, Virginia myself, being in D.C., and I'm not going to dig holes in my backyard. Therefore, they forgot to have crops, you know. And so when winter comes, they got really hungry. And one of the most grotesque things they did, and they really did do this, was they dug up two recently dead Indians and ate them. Now, that would mess up the Thanksgiving dinner, wouldn't it? Wow. So really? We don't want to emphasize that. And Something the other like reason we don't want to emphasize that one is because our Thanksgiving tradition dates back only to, about, uh, to exactly 1863. Now, Abraham Lincoln was, of course, president then, and he was really thankful for two amazing victories that had occurred the previous July 4th. Uh, one was, of course, Gettysburg, and the other one on the same day was the surrender of Vicksburg, which cut the, the Confederate states in two and allowed the shipping to resume down the Mississippi River and was very important. So he declared a day of Thanksgiving in the fall, and that's the Thanksgiving that uh, continued ever since. Well... In 1863, Virginia's in revolt. He doesn't want to emphasize that one either. So that's, I think, how come the pilgrims stick with us. I'm still thinking about eating the dead Indian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and probably will be for two days now. Well, maybe least. you can make a useful quip at about 3 p.m. on Thursday. Something that, tells me. Turn off all of your guests. That'd be good. Something tells me the pilgrims didn't refer to them as Native Americans either. No. Well... They referred to them by their tribal names, of course, like Wampanoags. Uh, but what's interesting is we did, they didn't refer to themselves as pilgrims. Uh, they called themselves separatists. Mm -hmm. And separatists. more than half of all the English that came over on that uh, Mayflower uh, weren't even separatists. They were just uh, trying to make their fortune in the Western Hemisphere. And that's kind of what the pilgrims were doing, too. That is, by calling them pilgrims, we make it all about religious freedom. Well, shoot, the pilgrims actually had religious freedom in Holland. Uh, in fact, that's why they had moved to Holland. But uh, the darndest thing happens once you start raising your kids in Holland. 
they start speaking Dutch. They stopped being English. And, and this kind of worried the pilgrims. Plus, they wanted to set up just the opposite of, of uh, what we claim they wanted. To, they wanted to set up a religious hierarchy in Massachusetts. They didn't want to allow uh, freedom of religion to anybody but themselves. And so they came to Massachusetts for those, well, for those two reasons. But I had to qualify what I just said. I said they came to Massachusetts. Did you know that that's a big debate, too? As opposed to where? Well, Virginia. They were supposed yeah. to go to Virginia. Now, Virginia is kind of an amorphous concept at that point. Um, it goes from maybe North Carolina to, Hudson, to the Hudson oh, River. Um, but they missed it. They missed it by quite a bit. And there's two theories as to why they missed it. One is that it was by accident. Uh, and I don't agree with that, and a lot of historians don't, partly because the one thing that sailors could measure really well was latitude. And uh, there was a uh, little more to the story. As Paul Harvey used to say, now you know the rest of the story. James Lowen, Lies My Teacher Told Me, available wherever books are sold.